Hey everyone, before we get started, I just want to remind you all that this episode is brought to you by our patrons like Automus X and Bobby Meow. Thanks for your support, guys. If you like what we do and you want to see more, please consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get videos early, Discord integrations, all that good stuff. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is time once again to talk about Star Wars Legion by Fantasy Flight Games, aka the only game that ever gets any news anymore. That's actually a lie. Uh, IA had an announcement, that's what I was going to say. And uh, Armada did have an FAQ. People are a little salty about some stuff going on in X-Wing, but that's not what the show is about. The show is about Star Wars Legion. And, of course, in Legion, we have been blessed with the Snowtroopers Unit Expansion Preview article. It's an article with a preview about Snowtroopers. Which, gonna be honest, really didn't say a lot new, but that's because most of it was revealed already. But anyway, we've got point values and stuff now. Let's, uh, let's jump right into it, I guess. So let's go ahead and look right at the old Stormtrooper. No, Snowtrooper. See, that's a problem that's never going to go away in Legion. But anyway, Snowtrooper cards. We've got a double spread right here. i got a little fluff text in the back because they don't got any weapon keywords. We can see them fully here. As expected, they have a 48 cost, four minis per card, one wound, one courage, red defense die. They t convert surges to hits. They have the E11 for their white dice. they got a black unarmed. They have heavy weapon personnel, gear and grenade slots, just like you'd expect. Their one keyword is steady, which means after you perform a move action, you perform a free ranged attack action, which is important because they only have speed one. They're weighed down by others, which ironically means that they don't care about difficult terrain because they already move speed one anyway. But hey, that's how it is. Like I said, there's not really a whole lot new here. We got the cost. They're about four more points more expensive than Stormtroopers. And while the personnel card isn't revealed in this spread or in the article, we can assume that if it follows the trends, it'll be 12 points, which is a little costly, but maybe it's worth it. The real value of Snowtroopers isn't that steady. You can double move and shoot. You can move, shoot for free, and then move back behind cover or break line of sight, stuff like that. Uh, clambering is technically a movement action, I believe, so you can clamber up something, shoot, and then you could theoretically just hop down with uh, grappling hooks, which come in the pack and that they can take. That might even be a, a cool strategy, but anyway... Enough about that. We knew all about that. Let's jump into some stuff we didn't necessarily know, for sure. So, since FFG has blessed us with a card spread that has both heavy weapon cards, we'll be looking at both of them at the same time. So we got Flame Trooper, and then the T7 Ion Snow Trooper. Snow Troopers only. Both of them add one blah 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 mini. So the Flame Trooper is range one, one black die. It has blast, so it ignores cover and spray, and then you add the weapons dice for each mini in the defending unit whose line of sight is not blocked, i.e. people you can hit at all. So that's only 20 points. Now that is technically cheaper than the DLT Trooper, but remember that Snow Troopers cost you four more than, snow, than Storm Troopers anyway. God, that is really hard to say. I've never thought about it that much, but actually speaking, this is awfully hard to do. But yeah, so Snow Troopers, it kind of evens out. They're basically the same, but remember that the, yeah, the baseline is more expensive, but this is obviously a little more limited. But having experience with the AT-RT Flamethrower, you will not find a better anti-infantry option. Squad of six guys, that's six black dice. Just for the Flame Trooper, let alone for the other four or five guys adding some white dice in there. You know, get that in there. It's also a blast, so cover doesn't matter. Only the fact that they're in line of sight completely. You've got a uh, surge to hit conversion, which is great. And then, yeah, just take care of it. For the points, real good, real effective. The other weapon is the T-Zone Ion Trooper. We kind of knew this already, but we got his point here, 34 points. Pretty expensive. Has impact one, so you can change one result one hit result to a crit, and then it's got ion one, and then it's uh, range one to two. It's got one black and two white die, and it's exhaustible. So, so all in all, probably not that great. It's got the same cost as the HH-12, but less range, less impact. It's not cumbersome, so that's a plus, but still, and it's exhaustible. And it's more expensive than the MPL, which also has impact in ion one, but has one more range and is two red dice. So, yeah, um, I don't think T7 Ion Troopers are very good. They're just too costly at too limited a range, even though these guys are slightly shorter range anyway with their, like, heavy weapon options. And you have a little bit more mobility because you can double move because there's no cumbersome. But with those two white dice in there and the only one black die, it's just... You can't see me, but I'm shaking my head. And it's exhaustible, even with the fact that Veers can undo exhaustible, you know. It just doesn't seem worth the points, especially on an expensive unit like this. I definitely think... Uh, double moving flame troopers is probably your way to go. Just use these as your dedicated anti-infantry guys. 
and bring a pack, like bring two flame trooper, snow trooper teams, two flamethrower teams, we should say, and then one regular stormies with an HH in your back row, and just let them take care of it. Or, God forbid, take some speeder bikes. Those have impact to each unit, and they're way more mobile. It's just, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, why would I take this? I don't know. Armor's kind of a concern, but at the same time, with those ranges and with those dice, I just don't think it's worth it, right? The At the very least, the HH has some of the best burst damage you can get. You're much better off also just taking impact grenades, because then you can dumb move and arrange one with those. Uh, throw in flamethrower, you know, at least for one extra black die, maybe two if you're in a mirror match with speeder bikes. Not that impact matters then. But yeah, no, just do do something different. Do close range, guys. So now let's talk about a card which is not actually in the Snowtrooper pack. I want to reiterate, it's not in Snowtroopers. We know what the other two upgrades in Snowtroopers are. It's impact grenades and grappling hooks again, okay? They want to make sure you got enough of those. But this is a card that appears in Veers. Some people have gotten their copies of Veers early, and so we've finally seen what the gear card that is in Veers, and presumably in Leia, and hopefully in Rebel Commandos also. But you never know. But given how, like I said, the impact grenades and the grappling hooks showed up, it probably will be, I hope. And that is environmental gear. So for three points and a gear slot, you get unhindered, which means you ignore the effect of difficult terrain. Gotta say, for three points, as situational as that is, that's pretty good. It's cheaper than all the other gear upgrades, and I honestly probably use grappling hooks about as much. Precise for the targeting scopes, that's fairly decent. Like, uh, I think targeting scopes, for instance, has a home on snowtroopers because they are not precise by default, and they still have their shitty white base die. You might also consider it on maybe, like, Leia, because she doesn't get precise to by default. Luke, of course, you might consider it on Rebels. But unless you really need that accuracy, you don't need it on your already precise Imperial units. So, I don't use climbing gear a lot. You can, especially depending on what your tables are. But environmental gear is cheaper and, I think, much more universally effective. At the very least, crossing a barricade is difficult terrain. So unhindered means you can hop the barricade at speed 2. And it's very important to note that this is not in the Snowtrooper pack because this does nothing for Snowtroopers. All difficult terrain does is reduce your speed by 1 to a minimum of 1. Snowtroopers can't go any slower. Right? They can only be stopped by impassable terrain, which this does not address. I don't know if they'll be like a super environmental gear for like twice or even triple as many points that lets you treat impassable terrain as, as difficult maybe or something. Don't know. That's a future design question that I can't answer. But yeah, this will come in Veers, presumably in Leia. Hopefully in other future packs you can get more copies, because if you've got free points and you've got a free gear slot, I think for most troopers there's no reason not to run it, just so you can be like, oh, I don't have to lose any movement crossing this barricade or this fence, jumping through this hedge, whatever. And that's all there is to the Snowtrooper expansion pack preview. Like I said, the only unrevealed card is the extra Snowtrooper Mini, which will presumably be 12 points because that fits the formula. Pro tip, please. Take the unit card and divide by 4. That's how much an individual Mini costs. So far, they've been accurate to that. But the other cards, as we discussed before, are just hooks and impact grenades. So now there's plenty of those floating around if you need some. Now, other than that, not much else to say about Legion. Uh, looks like Veers might be delayed slightly, or he might not. Who knows? That might be a local thing. Been seeing some rumblings. Given that the previews only just come out, it looks like Snowtroopers will not simultaneously release, but that was always just kind of an assumption based on some early details, and, you know, I always say don't necessarily trust early release dates. Release dates are mostly made up until the point where they're not, so just don't think too hard about them. And uh, hopefully we'll get more news. I expect, let's see, we're pretty late in the month. Snowtrooper preview just came out. Veers will release. If he releases on time, he'll release this week. We'll see about the Snowtroopers. And just go from there. So we should see in probably a couple of weeks some new previews on Leia and maybe Fleet Troopers. Also, FFG has announced they're going to have a big like product push reveal. May 1st, I believe, is their hyperspace thing. Kind of like to lead up to May 4th. So we're expecting maybe the next set of Imperial releases to be announced. Then the Special Forces and the Third Commander. Hopefully that'll be a, you know, a few months out. So that makes sense timeline-wise. Especially since... Veers will hopefully have released by then. Other than that, no new news. Uh, we'll see if there's any new announcements. I'll be sure to let you guys know. Keep watching the channel. Speaking of that, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you have any comments about this, such as you see a use for T7i on Snowtroopers, 
go ahead and leave those in the comment section down below, or you can hop on our community Discord, you know, talk to people live, some reactions, share some strats, whatever you want. And of course, if you are new here and you are not already, please subscribe to this channel to get all our videos as they come out. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications, that's very important. Other than that, you can always follow our videos by supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to videos early and lots of other goodies for pennies on the dollar, so long as there's Legion news, I guess. If nothing happens, there's no videos, but uh, don't let that stop you. And of course, as always, I thank you for your time. So glad to have you here, and uh, you know, get snowy, guys.